Hi guys, it's Infinity Gamer here, and I've just had my first game of Infinity, so I'm actually an Infinity Gamer. It was with the guys at my local uh, Infinity Club, and one of them was maybe familiar to a few people, the Battle Kiwi guy, Olivier. Now, that's why I've got such beautiful scenery to play on for the very, very first game that I've ever played, so I'm a bit spoiled. His website is absolutely full of amazing scenery, uh, tokens, and uh, things that you need for the Infinity game. Having seen it and now used some of his stuff, uh, because I'm very short on, on stuff, I'm definitely going to be buying stuff from this store. Now, I do thank Olivia for his patience in our first game. I had loads of questions about the things he was using, uh, the models, the tokens, everything. But uh, the good news is, is that if I ever want anything, I know exactly where to go. So, my list for my very, very first game of Infinity looked like this. So you can see on the left I've got a uh, Kappa Lieutenant with a Combi Rifle, Kappa Paramedic with Combi Rifle, Kappa Forward Observer with a Deployable Repeater and Combi Rifle, Sirius Forward Observer and Sirius Bot with Heavy Riot Stopper, Delta Doctor, Boarding Shotgun, Epsilon with Multi Sniper Nano Pulsar, Gamma with Foulback, uh, Gangbuster with Combi Rifle, Light Riot Stopper and Mad Traps, Hippolyta and a Varangian. So, going through the units, uh, you can see that it comes to 250 points, which was pretty good. It's one group, uh, so a one order pool. It's vanilla, which to some of you more experienced players will mean a lot. From my understanding currently, that just means that there's nothing fancy going on. There's no fire teams. There's, um, it's pretty basic and boring, which was ideal for me. So, talking about the units, the Delta came in. This guy was a doctor and also had the boarding shotgun ended up being really, really useful. So I will explain a little bit more later, but I didn't really understand the doctor side of things because my research hadn't got, gotten that far. But there was a stage in the mission where the AD drop, which I remember as being that you can basically deploy anywhere, but if it's in your opponent's half, you have to kind of do a roll for it and you might scatter. Um, so I ended up, uh, that might be incorrect because I think I needed, I was also going to scatter if I deployed in my own half. So I think I've got that wrong. Uh, add in the comments what it should be for those who are more in the know. But I ended up walking in from the table edge, which was handy because at this point, my Varangian and my Epsilon had were both in an unconscious state at the end of my opponent's first turn, which was the first turn of the game. So actually having my Delta Doctor able to come in almost anywhere on the table and try and revive some people ended up fantastic. So I really liked how this one ended up playing. Didn't do much else apart from that, but I feel like that was a good result anyway, was just having this player able to go and support someone who's maybe isolated and unconscious. So I like how that is. I'm going to keep it in the next couple of games, learn a bit more about the Delta. The Kappa Troopers did well in that they did nothing apart from die. So that's not very well, actually, when I come to think about it. So one of them was my lieutenant, as you can see here, one of them was a paramedic and the other was a forward observer. I didn't use them in their ways it, 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 at all. So I forgot which one was my lieutenant, I forgot which one was my paramedic and which one was the forward observer. So he, so my opponent did this thing where someone basically deep striked into my, sorry that's what we say in 40k and I'm still struggling to um, shake a lot of the terminology. So I basically just dropped in my back line um, killed off the first thing he saw, which was the Kappa with the orange hair. I panicked, said that was my lieutenant because it was my own fault for not knowing who was what, and I felt like he deserved the uh, benefit of the doubt. Uh, actually, that one was my medic, I remember in hindsight, and my lieutenant was this one, who didn't end up dying, and then this one was my forward observer. So I've got to do a better job of noting it down and knowing which ones are which. Uh, just so that when something happens, I can say. So, so yeah, I started my first term in a loss of lieutenant situation just because I forgot which Kappa I'd actually assigned as being my lieutenant. Really big rookie move. I realized that in a major game, that's actually going to kill me. But I survived it um, and learned a big lesson as a result of that mistake. Next, I had Team Sirius. These guys had a lot of potential, but also ended up doing very little. Uh, they moved up into some cover. Uh, with the human element of the Team Sirius in a building in lots of cover and then the bots behind the cover. My opponent turned around a corner with two flamers, uh, lit them both up. Unfortunately, it was the human count element that died, failing the dodge roll, 
and the bot survived, but because they were a team and the human was the main part of that team, they, the bot ended up doing nothing and basically spent the rest of the game in an unconscious state. So, and, and again, didn't move, didn't shoot, didn't do anything the whole game. So, out of the, the so the cappers in the team series did pretty much nothing, um, but did learn what not to do really. Uh, and again, that was kind of my mistake. The gamma, as I anticipated, ended up being quite a useful unit. During deployment, I was going to stick him on a rooftop because during the wildfire games, he was kind of the most powerful thing out of all of the units that were being taught through the wildfire sessions. So my opponent deployed first and he put this plasma sniper rifle guy on the rooftop of his building. And I thought, okay, awesome. I can, even though I'm going second, I can stick this guy with his power back um, on a roof, get line of sight, yeah, he'll be shooting at me, but I'll get a free ARO. That'll be fantastic. Maybe I'll kill him with a crit. And then luckily the guys who I was playing, who I were playing against were kind of in tutorial mode and just said, hey, look, that's a terrible idea. This is a plasma sniper rifle. It, you're probably going to die because I get an extra shot for this and an extra shot for Y and I get plus 900 for this. You know, it's a small exaggeration if you, if you are learning and don't understand the irony of what I'm saying. But so the gamma ended up being hidden, but I still managed to get a good few lines of fire that meant that when things like the flamer guy came around and killed my team serious, at least I was getting AROs using the gamma. Um, and again, in wildfire, they didn't really explore the different weapon profiles. So when I'm looking at the gamma here, he's got the foul vouch and you can't really see it here, but the, there's different profiles and there's like AP and double action shooting. And so you can actually react quite nicely uh, bearing in the changing circumstances. Again, in Wildfire, we never actually got an opportunity to use different profiles. So that was quite cool to see, and I, I did enjoy that. Uh, next, we have the not Valkyrie Varangian and the Epsilon. Now, Epsilon, I love this guy. Um, he was so useless to start with, but due to a series of awesome events, ended up being brilliant. So yeah, started my first turn reasonably in cover with the Varangian behind. Both got shot at, by something awesome and the Varangian was doing an ARO smoke dodge which I know <laughs> I'm not allowed to say apparently so it was a smodge um, so yeah the Varangian tried a smodge in the hopes of saving the Epsilon failed her smodge both got shot both ended up in an unconscious state, and that was at the beginning of the first turn. So I thought, oh, this is fantastic. This is brilliant. Delta guy drops in, tries to revive the Varangian, fails. She's dead, which is a cool twist of events that apparently doctors are so terrible that they take them from an unconscious state to dead state if they fail. Um, but then the Epsilon got revived, which was fantastic. And then the Epsilon and the Delta ended up moving around the table and just picking things off. And the, and the Epsilon sniper is brilliant. His multi-spectral visor is amazing. Um, so even though I got a white noise grenade thrown to obviously try and disrupt this guy's AROs, when I then started moving around the table and more selecting my targets, uh, it did kind of mean that he was just able to pick people off because he wasn't suffering a lot of the minuses that, that everyone else was. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not... I can't remember the mechanics hugely, but he ended up being amazing. He took out two two guys at least, uh, which was fantastic. And I think one of them was even on an ARO. Yeah, he took out the the leader of a fire team who was just coming down a ladder, shot at the Epsilon, and then in the ARO, the Epsilon just took him out, which was fantastic. Again, using double ammunition, I think. Um, so twice the amount of saves for one shot, which was fantastic. So Epsilon ended up being my favorite model from this game. Uh, and the Varangian did nothing apart from try to smodge and failed. Um, Hippolyta and Gangbuster. Wow, these guys were fun. So Hippo didn't do heaps. Um, she just kind of buzzed up the table to try and get into combat, threw an eclipse grenade at some stage, which was, again, fun. But there was lots of promise of being able to get into combat. And then eventually another flamer guy came around the corner and just lit her up and sent her into a crispy mess, so that wasn't very fun for her. But uh, no unconscious state thing, and again, I really do apologise to you experienced players who are listening to me rabbit on. You know, I, I know I'm not using the right terminology, but hopefully for the newbies, they'll go, oh yeah, yeah, non-unconscious state, maybe I understand that, or yeah, burnt like a crisp. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like something that can happen. 
So yeah, she went into an unconscious state, but because she doesn't, because she has that no unconscious state thingy, she could still wander around, even though she was, she basically had no wounds left. So that was, that was fun. And the gangbuster was brilliant. So he's got mad traps, which were amazingly fun. Um, I only realized initially, so initially I only just deployed one mad trap, because apparently it's quite uncommon to have two deployable ones. So it wasn't until my first turn, so basically the, my, the second turn of the round, that we realized that I could have had a second one out the entire time. And they're brilliant because they've got like an eight inch proxy thing. So if anything wanders within the eight inches of these mad traps, the little glue bots, or we would start calling them glue monkeys. So if anyone gets within the zone, the glue monkey runs at them and hugs them. And then they basically can't do much uh, without an engineer. So that was fun. And then his shotgunny thing is also like a glue template, which actually towards the end of the game became really important. I mean, somehow, I ended up winning the game, and I think it was the typical let the newbie win so he doesn't hate life and, and let him play. But uh, one of the moves that I could have done at the end was to basically glue glue gun uh, two of the enemies, which would have helped me score extra objectives. So he's really good, and because he's got like the forward observer uh, or no infiltrate rule, he started up really close to the halfway line, and his two little glue monkeys would have deployed either side, you know, eight inches, which then added added to eight inches, so gave him what like a Huge, huge potential reachable range for uh, AROs and activation. So I actually really like the Gangbuster. Uh, he ends up doing not much, but sitting prone throughout the whole game. But there was that threat and area denial, which was fantastic, which let the Delta and the Epsilon move up the left-hand flank of the board. And then the Kappa Troopers, Gamma, and Hippolyta move up the right-hand side of the board. So I was beginning to see how the synergies of all of these could work together and really started to enjoy just playing the models, understanding their rules, understanding mimetism, multispectral visor, infiltrate, AD drop, um, even and then even things like combi rifles. So great to just get my head around some of the models. What I'll do next is just show you through some of the, the scenery that we're playing on, some of the positioning. I won't get too much into like a battle report, um, but it was a great fun game and I do, I do thank the guys who um, who helped guide me through it, and it was so much fun. I, I can't wait to play again. So as mentioned before, I was spoiled rotten in my first game by being able to play on this beautiful table. Battle Kiwis, uh, Serene setup with the White Noise podcast branding was a pleasure to play on, and I have been, I think now, ruined for most other games. So thank you very much, Oli, for destroying my ability to play Infinity in quite the same way. But during the game, one thing I really enjoyed was being able to use the army builder and the wiki combined. So obviously having your entire army online here made it really easy to find what you had and check on some keywords and some profiles quite quickly. I had started to build a massive document that was everyone's profiles. But someone showed me this hack where if you click on the gun icon in the top right, it brings up the weapon profiles of the army that you have, so you don't have to you know, filter through, and then you can drag and drop the boxes around to make it easy as a quick view. Uh, if you then click on the unit button, which is just to the right of the one selected right now, it shows you the weapon profile for the units that you have selected, as you can see here, which makes quick reference very easy. Um, I hated in 40k going back through codexes to try and check rules and stuff, so this is really quick and easy. I also love the fact that you can click on a keyword and it takes you straight to the link in the wiki for that, which makes checking rules very easy. Huge improvement from what I'm used to in 40k. Love this. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been so supportive of these videos. I do appreciate it. It does take a little bit to, to put yourself out there like this. So I do appreciate the kind words that everyone's been given and the support from the community as a whole. And I'm really looking forward to this being the first step in my Infinity adventure. Thanks, everyone.